the single most important development in the IC community in healthcare in the last 50 years is a recognition that we are not all the same, that there is tremendous diversity in this IC patient population. Remember, for some people, IC can begin in childhood, usually after some sort of trauma or accident, while for others, it can begin after menopause and estrogen atrophy. For some people, IC begins after going through chemotherapy because of a chemical injury to the bladder wall, while for others, it might be the result of infection. And here's what we do know, bladder treatments are really not that effective. And interestingly, 20 years ago, when they started looking at muscles, what we found is that pelvic floor physical therapy was very effective for many patients. And that was really the moment when the IC world was turned on its head. Because, because again, from up to that point, they were going bladder disease, bladder disease. Well, wait a second. If physical therapy helped, maybe it's not just a bladder disease. Maybe, in fact, there muscle, there's muscle involvement. And so today, in 2023, in the future, what we're really trying to do is provide a more individualized diagnostic workup. We don't want you to spend years and years doing bladder therapies that aren't working. And in fact, if you look at our American Urology Association guidelines for IC, what they say is, if you're not responding to treatment, if you're getting worse rather than better, let's take a step back, revisit the diagnosis and see what we missed. So how do we do that? We do that with something called phenotyping or subtyping. What that means is we want to figure out what group you're in so that we can find the right treatment for your unique case of IC. We don't want you to waste time doing bladder treatments if you've got a healthy bladder. We need to figure out what else is going on so we can treat whatever it is going on, like tight pelvic floor muscles. So um, it was about seven years ago that Dr. Christopher Payne, who ran the IC research program at Stanford University, you know, flat out said, I believe that there are five distinct patient groups. And his system has worked incredibly well. I've been using that exclusively in my IC coaching sessions for, for well over five years. And so, and he argues that a diagnosis of IC does not give a patient and provider a good intuitive pathway, but a more specific diagnosis will, a more individualized di diagnostic workup will. So he focuses on five core subtypes. Subtype number one, Hunter's lesions. These are patients who have big bloody wounds on their bladder. They bleed profusely. These patients often suffer from very, very severe pain and they don't respond well to bladder treatments. And now we know why, because we have research, multiple research studies now who have found that Hunter's lesions can be the result of a viral infection known as a polyoma vi uh, virus or an Epstein-Barr virus. Um, and they're exploring the use of antivirals now. Uh, but we also have one other theory about Hunter's lesions, that it's neuroinflammation. You can read a lot more about that over on our website, the IC Network. So that's one distinct group. So if you have Hunter's lesions, your diagnosis is technically Hunter's lesion disease. In, his, in the pain system, his group number two is bladder wall driven. And we look for three different things in bladder wall driven. The first thing we look for is chemical injury. So if your symptoms began after chemotherapy or you have a terrible diet and you're drinking massive amounts of soda, then we're gonna look at a chemical injury of the bladder wall because the bladder can indeed be injured. And usually it's injured through some sort of toxic chemical exposure. The second thing we're gonna look for in this group is estrogen atrophy, aging, birth control, total hysterectomy, using Lupron. Think about your bladder for a moment. It's the only organ in the human body designed to hold toxic waste because urine is body waste. Urine contains ammonia and urea and all sorts of irritants. So how can the bladder hold ammonia for hours at a time and not get damaged? Well, it turns out it's wet on the inside. It has a really thick coating of mucus, just like your mouth. And that mucus is a barrier which protects everything. But unfortunately, that mucus is estrogen dependent. So when you're young and have lots of estrogen, you got lots of mucus and your bladder can defend itself. But once your estrogen levels drop, then you don't quite have the mucus and your bladder's ability to defend itself is now compromised. There's no disease process happening in these patients. This is just estrogen atrophy. 
And our treatment is going to be focused on improving the health of the skin, usually with topical estrogen. Our third variant in this group is chronic infection, because chronic infection can happen, especially if you're older and your bladder can't defend itself. If you suffer from recurring UTI, if you've got two infections in six months, three in a year, your diagnosis is recurring UTI. And, but it's not just bacteria. We, now we know, again, research from our own National Institutes of Health, that some patients struggling with really severe bladder pain actually have a fungal infection in their bladder, candida. And I've had that. And let me tell you, candida infection in the bladder was agonizing. And so when we think about infection, we're not really just looking now at just bacteria. We want to look at fungus and we want to look at virus. And this is where the new next generation DNA urine testing is very, very helpful because it will identify those. In the pain system, its third patient group is pelvic floor driven. These are the patients whose symptoms began after a muscle trauma. So if you had a baby, if you fell, broken tailbone, if you were an athlete, long-term muscle tension will directly affect the bladder because it restricts blood supply to the bladder. As those muscles get tight, they start, start, they start squeezing blood vessels. And if your bladder doesn't have good blood flow, How's it gonna be healthy? It's not gonna be healthy. It's actually gonna be in a state of what we call ischemia. So our therapeutic priority for patients with tight pelvic floor muscles is physical therapy to restore blood supply. In the pain system, is fourth group is pudental neuralgia. So these are patients who have positional symptoms or so you have pain when it hurt, when you sit down, that gets better when you stand up. Or you might have pins and needles, areas of numbness, maybe persistent genital arousal disorder where you feel this very painful, embarrassing, awkward, icky, uh, painful arousal sensation that just occurs randomly. That means that your pudental nerve is being squeezed by a muscle. And so therapeutically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to release that muscle. We're gonna try to calm that nerve down with treatments. And then in the pain system, our last subtype is widespread pain, also known as central sensitization. So these are the patients who um, have IC, IBS, vulvodynia, TMJ, fibromyalgia, migraines. If you have two or more pain conditions, that puts you into the chronic overlapping pain group. This is also one of my subtypes. And therapeutically, what we're gonna be doing instead is focusing on calming our central nervous system down. This is not mental illness. This is in fact injury to the central nervous system that leaves that patient in a constant state of fight or flight, which is then intensifying pain and tightening muscles. And so therapeutically, we're, we're going to be focusing very, very directly on calming nerves down. And that's one of the things that also helped me tremendously. So the Chris Payne subtyping system really helps patients differentiate between cause and effect and really narrow down on what could be causing their symptoms and doing the right treatment for their unique case. Now, interestingly, in late 2022, another doctor, Dr. Curtis Nickel up in Canada, who's one of the top IC researchers in the world, um, uh, proposed nine subtypes. He expanded Chris Payne's list by adding a few more subtypes, like an allergenic subtype, an infection-mediated subtype, a urethral subtype, etc. And what makes his system very, very cool is he also published recipes for treatment. Now, last but not least, we have to talk about government because who's very slow to adapt to change but government and our conservative medical organizations. And so I'm very happy to say that last year when the National Institute, Institutes of Health convened their planning meeting for IC research, they finally also agreed that there are distinct patient groups. And this is one reason why so many research studies have failed. Now they haven't adopted all the subtypes, but they're willing to go to three so far, and I'm sure they'll go to more in the future. But they believe that there's a bladder wall driven group, they believe that there's a pelvic floor driven group, and they believe that there is a widespread pain group. And again, each group will have its own research and its own treatment priorities. So as you seek answers to your pain and discomfort, it's going to begin with you understanding phenotyping or subtyping. And if you come on over to the IC Network, icnetwork.org, we've got a whole section on that. 
So come on over and check it out. Now my next video is going to talk about treatment.